everyone. Welcome back to the Rebel Crow Psychic Show with your host, Athena Silver. Hi, I'm Anya River. Tonight, we are talking about books. Um, <laughs> we're talking about uh, books within the guise of curanderismo and shamanism that have taught us something that are part of our practices that have been integrated into our lives and our ways of thinking books that have inspired us on our spiritual paths and we hope that it'll inspire you as well stay tuned Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right into it. Um, we're talking about books that are near and dear to our hearts that have helped us in some kind of way, either inspired us or gave us wisdom or a practice that we that we use in our day to day. Um, we're talking about books, particularly about shamanism and curanderismo. For anyone who is not in, familiar with those two. Um, Curanderismo is uh, like indigenous healing in like, a, you see it mainly in like Mexico and South America and in the Caribbean. It's like a folk healing tradition with natural items like herbs and rocks and eggs and, and scent. You know, it, it's very like what you have in your house. Um, do you want to explain shamanism for everyone? Um, sure. I mean, shamanism is, it's found in all cultures, you know, it's, it's ancient practices in all cultures. And in shamanism, you're, you're working with spirit, you know, you're working with different layers of spirit and um, there's incredible healing and, and, um, you know, knowledge that you can gain from working with these practices. I feel like maybe you could explain it better. But. All right, I'll give a, I'll add to that a little bit. Just add, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's the the art of energy medicine and traveling within your energy, within your core, core essence, and being able to tap into your soul and into cosmic energies and conducting them. Um, a lot of there, these healing practices are like spiritual, mental, and physical, all in one, all integrated together. Um, you really have to look at it through the guise of folk healing, folk medicine, the way of, you know, people, our, our ancestors, you know, uh, many of them practice a lot of these practices that we're gonna talk about tonight and what some of these books feature. Um, you know, the art of cleansing spiritually, um, opening yourself up, solving issues like, you know, love or, you know, poverty or job loss or incarceration, things of that nature. They use charms, tricks. They use um, spells, prayers, incantations, washes, you know, um, even just in candles and intentions. And it, it's using everything you have in a magical way to get what you're asking for, working with the spirits in step with the spirits as opposed to trying to make them do your work for you it's yeah, I also feel respect based yeah i also feel like it's just a it's very nature oriented so you when yes. you're practicing from a shamanistic standpoint you're practicing in relation to everything you know stones and and river spirits and and sky spirits and and mother earth and you know like it's it's very relational and it takes you back to basics which is the earth mm -hmm. um this is a lot of these practices date all the way back to the beginning of humanity um with with the way that we speak and certain words that we say certain tools that we use um these these practices are as old as humans you know so uh, let's get into the first book. Um, I'm, I'm going to start off if that's cool. Go for it. All right. So this is probably one of my favorite books um, on curanderismo, I think, ever written. Ever written. 
um, the author is a fantastic teacher. She's a fantastic woman, a fantastic healer. I owe so much to her. She's helped me out in ways that I don't even think she realizes. Um, the book I'm talking about is Cleansing Rites of Curanderismo, Limpias Espirituales of Ancient Mesoamerican Shamans by Erica Beneflor. Uh, this book is all about spiritual cleansing. So she talks about spiritual cleansings in the way of using smoke, um, different incense, different herbs that you can use, um, doing spiritual baths and cleansings um, with eggs as well, um, fire cleansings. It's all different uh, teachings that she learned from her uh, in, uh, indigenous Mayan and Mexica mentors in the Yucatan in Mexico. Uh, she writes about her life in this book as well, which is really interesting and informative. We're hoping to have her on as, as a guest at some point. So we'll let you guys know about her. She's a really chill lady. I love her. Um, <laughs> so this book cleared up and made a lot of connections for me that I, I had missing in my life at the time. I read it when it came uh, about a couple months after it came out, um, this was a couple of years ago. And I, I had learned some cleansing methods from our great grandmother. Um, she, it was very like Dominican based, um, like folk healing and like the egg cleansings and things like that. And I never knew where it came from, like, like the basis of it. Like I knew the practice, but I didn't know the why and the how and the when, you know, like I didn't know the surrounding information around it. And through reading her book, you know, I, I made a lot of connections with the practices that I had grown up with, not really knowing the spiritual side of them and the history associated with them. Um, there's a lot, she mainly focuses on Mesoamerican practices coming from Mexico, but some of these are cousins to the healing methods that are practiced in the Caribbean and in, you know, South America. So it, it's a, a hub of information all up and down the Americas and the Caribbean in history. And a lot of these practices were disseminated out, you know, to everyone, to all the, the entire indigenous community. So they were retained and tweaked and kept in all different manners. So it's really nice to see, you know, the Mexican version of some of the practices that I grew up with in a Caribbean household. So... I just find so much value in this book. This is on my, my go back and read list. You know, I, I'll, mm -hmm. as you can tell, I have notes in it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, it just, it, it really was, it, this book found me at a good time. Um, I have done a lot of the exercises in this book. I highly recommend her, her classes, her books. She just came out with another book, which, you know, we'll, we'll throw it in the description for anyone who's interested. Um, when we, when we have her on, we'll be talking more about it. Yeah. But, I can't wait to meet her. Oh, she's so cool. Um, it's just, it, it's the core of folk healing and it just spoke to me and it still speaks to me. It's timeless practices that just are really heart centered and meant to live a more positive wellness, you know, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So what about you, That's Anya? Great. What you got? Um, first on my list is shape-shifting, shamanic techniques for global and personal transformation by John Perkins. And this is what the book looks like. Ooh, that's a pretty cover. <laughs> so this book, uh, John Perkins was my original teacher in the realm of shamanism. And um he has a lot of bestsellers on the New York Times bestseller list. He is like this geopolitical, you know, his whole career was like this geopolitical, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to explain it right, <laughs> but he was involved in some stuff that, you know, maybe wasn't like the best. And he ended up being uh, taken under by shamans in different areas of the world and was able to turn that whole career around into something that is earth, you know, like earth inspired and, and, um, you know, trying to, trying to heal 
based on the prophecies of the eagle and the condor, which he talks about all the time. You know, the eagle and the condor are um, the heart people and, and the mind people, you know, the science people. Yeah. And it's really the prophecy of when, you know, when when the, the science people came over and, you know, and all this destruction happened 500 years ago. And um, at this point in time, we would be able to potentially merge and create this much better humanity and, and, you know, leave all of that stuff, you know, heal all of that stuff that, that happened. So this book in particular is um, full of a lot of his like geopolitic, you know, career, which is awesome. I love following that. It's such a story. It's really, you know, energetic, creative writing. Um, but it gives a good base into shape shifting and it, it's woven into the book, you know, when he's oh, visiting nice. these different places and, you know, so it reads more like a story, but this was my introduction into the world of shamanism and shape shifting in general. And, um, and it's incredibly like, and ent not entertaining. Um, you know, it's a page turner, not entertaining. That's, that's very like shallow of a word, you know, yeah. like it's, it's grabbing, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, a <clears throat> something that you know without this without him as a as an intro into shamanism i don't think i would have had like the same kind of response or you know i don't know there's just something about it so um the one thing about this book is that it is heavy on the story and and there's so much there's actually like times where things are literally you know shape-shifting like he's he's reporting this you know that he's yeah. seeing like shape-shifting happen um but the downside is is that it's not there's not as much like technique involved for how you can work on this yourself so but overall I think it's an amazing book and um for anybody who's interested in learning what shape-shifting is about um you know, it's, it's just, it's really great, you know, and all, really all of his books are, are so gripping and, so. and, you know, fantastic. So, yeah. yeah. So what did you, so what did you really take away from this book? Like what did it teach you? Started me on my path, you know, like open, one of his big things is changing your perception um that that there's so much more power in changing your perception than we humans understand and you know that's really really like this was years and years and years ago that I started following him and I've been yeah. to like many of his workshops and things like that but just now like I'm realizing the power of changing your perception um on a on a level that I have never understood before and you know this was this book, um, as well as some of his other books, have like planted that seed of like, oh my gosh, you know, changing your perception really is like the most powerful thing that you can do towards changing the world around you. Yeah. You know, so I think that was a foundational, it was a foundational piece for me in my very eclectic practice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Have to check that one out. Thanks. So my next one. <laughs> this is a different kind of shamanism. This is Neolithic shamanism, spirit work in the Norse tradition mm. by Raven Caldera and Galena Kroskov. This book, it just, it blew my mind when I read it. Um, for all of you that follow the podcast, you know that Anya and I are mixed race. Um, I have a Caribbean heritage, but I also have Danish heritage and on my father's side. So a couple of years ago, I, I really decided to go on a deep dive to understand, you know, my father's side of the family. Cause I never, I didn't grow up around them. I didn't really have any kind of cultural context or connection to his culture. So I started to read books and I came across this one. Now, what I love about this book is it, it, it really dives deep into the roots of shamanism, like where it came from and how old it is. It really dates back to like the stone age mm -hmm. and 
all of these archetypes that we find nowadays are just being repeated from the beginning of history to modern day. It's just getting played out in different ways. The, the cycles are the same though. Um, it goes really deep into the foundations of this of the Norse traditional shamanic practice. Whereas a lot of people see the paganism side of uh, Norse tradition, like with Odin and Thor and Freya and all of them. But there is a very little known shamanic tradition that was very popular at the time in Viking age. And it was primarily women. Um, they were the, the magicians in, in that tradition. They were the healers mm -hmm. and the protect and the shamans and, and the, the divinators and the seers, you know, they, they held very high positions in society. So this book goes into some of the practices that, you know, that we have historical um, knowledge of. And it also talks a lot about the modern day movements, the recreation movements of North paganism that, you know, people are familiar with and how they, how they differ and how they are the same. You know, what was created, what was added, what was already there. You know, um, unfortunately, there was not a huge um, lot of texts that survived um, the, con the conversion to Christianity in Scandinavia. So there, there is a lot of knowledge that was lost, but there's a lot of people that are connecting the dots and putting things together and really giving you um, a more complex understanding of what was really practiced and what and where their spiritual their spirituality was. Um, they also talk about the different tools that were used, the different um, types of regalia that was worn. And it just it's it's a comprehensive guide to you know old shamanism in Europe. So I, I think it's, it's a cool one. It, it's a cool one to get thrown in there, especially for me, because I am so seated in Caribbean practice that this is a real like step outside the box for me. So I, you know, I, it was a really good book. It, it was one of those that totally opened my perception, like you were talking about, about how I feel about not only my own practices, but the origin of humanity and all of our our spiritual side and how it was created so yeah that's that seems amazing I want to read that too like I feel it's like we're book. just gonna read each other's books now which is great <laughs> <laughs> so um my next book is related to my first book it's um shape-shifting into higher consciousness by Lynn Roberts and so Lynn I didn't follow her as much as I followed John but she was a partner of John's and um, what I loved about this book, I don't have it. Um, I read it on Scribe, you know, it's on Scribe. So mm -hmm. you can check it out there. Um, what I love about it is that it complements John's work so well, but it's just feminine, yeah. you know, and there's so much more practice in hers, like interwoven in, you know, it's a very feminine um like divine feminine I'm talking you know like yeah. it's not just you know flowery like this is like divine feminine work and so you know there is a lot more um practice and a lot more instruction and a lot more opening that that's there so I learned a lot you know from from what she had to say and you know, I, I also love how much, you know, when she was tasked with working as John's assistant in the Amazon and then, you know, ended up <laughs> becoming like so much more because she's so, she's so connected and so knowledgeable. Um, so I think it's a really great, it's a really great book. It's um, Shapeshifting into Higher Consciousness by Lynn Roberts. How did it affect you? What was your takeaway from it? Just that, you know, a lot of the things that I read don't include that. And she interweaves the practice into almost every aspect of what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's like a step-by-step, -step, you know, sort of, again, this is an initiation, you know, this is, this is a beginner, you know, a beginner into shamanism 
you know, ma- manual. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I think so- that all of the books tonight really talk about the beginning steps of, you know, getting into shamanism and quiranidismo. Yeah. So it's of course, a good yeah, basis. we're going to we're going to curate that that way specifically, you know, and then, you know, when we get feedback later, we'll talk about other stuff. But Oh, definitely. You know, it, 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 for me it was just um just being able to like just experience you know like I'm very experiential that's how I learn you know so Mm -hmm. being able to being able to to actually integrate the practices as I'm as I'm going along you know that means a lot because not all not not everybody includes that yeah very true it was really good and she's very she's very deep you know like very insightful yeah, you've, there's a lot of books out there you find that it's more narrative as opposed to exercise, you know. And theory, you know. Like. Yeah, which is good. It's <laughs> nice to have a bit of both. But sometimes, especially when you're a solo practitioner, you're looking for experiential type of um, material, something mm-hmm. to study, something to practice, something to immerse yourself in. The story's nice. How you got there is nice. But, you know, what you take away, the understanding, the wisdom, the practice, that's sometimes more valuable and not always found in a book. Yeah, I think it is more valuable, definitely, because you hear sayings all the time, like, you know, like English language has all these like phrases. And until you experience it yourself, like you, you might have had this like this experience where you go through a certain thing, you understand the phrase and you're like, oh, I get it now. I've heard it a million times in my life. I'm sorry, I don't have, like, I can't pinpoint that for you, but you know, maybe that might hit some people. (laughs) So the next book I have to talk about, the last book that I have, um, I ordered this book, uh, well, I ordered a different book and was sent two copies of this book. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I started reading it and loved it and kept both copies. I'm going to have to do a giveaway one of these days to give away this other copy. It's just this book, just it found its way to me precisely when I needed it. Mm-hmm. And it, it changed, it, talk about perception change. You know, this, this book really, it, it opened up my perception to a lot of global perspective that I not, ne- that I didn't necessarily look at before. Mm-hmm. So the book I'm talking about is the Four Visions of Power of the Curandero, an initiation to energy medicine and spiritual journey in Peru by Amaru Lee. I believe this book was self-published. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it went through. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a publisher. You can find it on Amazon. I'll tell you that much. Um, this is all about a man's journey from getting the call to spirit, getting the call to learn and train as a curandero and an energy worker, and really opening up his possibilities through going to different sacred sites with his friend and a travel group. And he, and he wound up actually um, leading some backpackers to the different sacred sites all around Peru and South America. Um, Mm -hmm. and doing despacho ceremonies and honoring the earth and doing these different, you know, he did a couple of plant medicine journeys in the book that opened up his perception and he was able to connect and get messages from the divine beings in those sacred sites. He also made a trip to Egypt and to uh, Tibet and he did despacho in both those areas. And I think he went to North America as well. There was four spaces that he went globally and did Mm -hmm. this despacho ceremony to bring in an usher healing into the earth and also a spiritual awakening. This book takes place in the early nineties. So what really blew my mind on a way with this was that he was talking when he went to Peru, uh, not to Peru, to Tibet, He went to Tibet to speak to some of the monks and they were telling him about this prophecy that they have there, that the spiritual pole and access of 
of the earth moves from time to time. So it was in Egypt in ancient times and it moved to diff, you know, to other places and it moved eventually to Tibet. And mm -hmm. they were prophesizing that it was going to move to Peru. And mm -hmm. flash forward now, ayahuasca is popular, going down on spiritual retreats to the Amazon. Rainforest is really popular. People are connecting back to their, their roots in Central, South, and North America and the Caribbean. And people are really getting intact with their indigenous ancestry through all these ancestry tests that we're having now. So... I really see that the spiritual axis has moved to South America. So right. it, it really blew my mind open because before that, I really didn't, I had never heard that before. And the concept never occurred to me that we are truly a global species and that the energy that we feel is energy that the entire world feels and that we need to harmonize on a global mm -hmm. scale. That's why all of us healers and shamans and witches and you know uh, spiritual people, we need to get out there and reach everybody on a global scale, which is why the age of the internet has been so important. You know, yeah, we're right. now stepping into that, you know, north me south, east me west mentality that has been prophesized for many, many, you know, thousands of years. It's yeah. time for the global awakening, which is perfect because that's what we're going through stepping into the age of Aquarius so right now right at this very moment it's incredible so this is a book you want to read to get a little insight yep. into what's happening <laughs> yeah this is like <laughs> a list to catch up to make sure that we're like right where we need to be and um, I love the way that he described his plant medicine journeys um, yeah and what he saw in these sacred places in in um I think he went to Machu Picchu and had a very ex spiritual experience there and just reading it. Like, I think I read this book in a matter of like three days. I did not expect to wow. love it. It just <laughs> showed up and I, I was like, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> that was spirit. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely spirit. And then they gave me two copies of the book. So it knew, so the, the spirits knew that this book is going to change somebody's lives one of these days, not just mine. That was definitely um, spirit. <laughs> but I highly recommend this book, especially if you're getting into, um, like, getting called by spirit to it to have initiation into um, spiritual practice and and priesthood and shamanism and whatever it is your thing is. This book mm -hmm. is really just it's timeless and it's concise and easy to understand but so deep and wise and powerful in and of itself like the simplicity is what brings these profound prophecies into tangible bite-sized pieces you mm -hmm. know so where you can actually like read it and understand it and embody it yeah it's great it's really great i can't wait <laughs> so um my last book is actually, I'm cheating a little bit here because <laughs> this is not a book you should read. It should only be on audio. And really? the reason why, yes, is because this is completely experiential. Ooh. So it's more like a long meditation than, a, and like I mentioned before, I'm extremely experiential. So this was um, really powerful. And I, I go back and I listen to it whenever I'm feeling like I need a boost because mm -hmm. the name of the book is called An Invitation to Freedom, Immediate Awakening for Everyone by Muji. And um, I went back and listened to it today and so powerful, so intense. This is basically becoming one with the void, becoming one with the oversoul um, that we are all connected to, you know, and and some people consider that, you know, like even above where the spirits are residing. So this is like very intense, but beautiful and gentle meditation that is just, it's so powerful and connecting and um, really, 
needed right now. So I, I decided since I went back to it today, since we were preparing for tonight, I was like, you know, I think I'm going to do this every day up until, you know, the end of the year or whatever, yeah. you know, um, because this is a powerful time. And so this is basically taking what, what this meditation is, 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 yeah, you know, putting aside the personal, you know, so you're really embodying the oversoul. Um, and when you do that, you can just let go of everything, you know, everything that is going on in the person's life and your person, your person, you know, is it just becomes like minuscule compared to remembering who we really are. And that's what that's what you're doing in this in this meditation is just it's it's going back and connecting and being with the you know the god the source the god source you know and um yeah. it's powerful stuff so it's really quick you know it's about the whole book you know book is like an hour long um and i've listened to it it only, it only works if you can actually sit down and listen to it as a meditation. So it's not going to work if you're doing stuff around the house or, you know, you have to actually be able to sit down and be present. Yeah. So, which is hard. Another... It, it, it really, it, it's a commitment to yourself that you have to make in mm -hmm. order to like get the most out of it. That's why I love books that include experiential um, chapters or, or exercises because it forces you to integrate all of the learning that you just did. You know, it teaches you yep. to, and forces you to tap into a part of yourself that you wouldn't necessarily do on a day to day. So I, the work is in the practice, you know, for me, which is why, like, I don't read as many spiritual books, I think, because of that, because I tend to live in my head, like, I have a lot of air signs. <laughs> <laughs> And where I really, where I really need help is like embodying. So yeah. for me, like whenever I do work, it always has to be like some kind of experiential component. Otherwise, you know, I live in my head all day. <laughs> See, I'm a Capricorn and I have a lot of Capricorn in my chart. So I'm like, oh, book, perfect. Let me get to reading. Oh, yeah. exactly what I need to know. I'll just look it up myself. You know, I'm very much like, I like to learn things for myself, by myself, you know, it, it's just, it's the way I, I, I trust my own information more than I do trust other people's information, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to a lot of these very deep, very old practices, because, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions out there and it's hard to really nail down what's right and what's, not, what doesn't sit well, or what's been, um, borrowed and appropriated or repurposed. It's good mm -hmm. to know, you know, a really comprehensive version of what you're trying to practice. Whereas a book is going to give you that, you know, doing a one minute TikTok video or a YouTube video is great. You're going to learn something, but you're not going to really get into that much detail to where you're going to understand, you know, the soup and nuts of the practice, you know, mm -hmm. I've just always been a fan of books. I'm one of those oh, people, I'm, a I'm an old school too. in print kind of girl. You Hopefully know. you guys don't think I'm illiterate. I have like, I read all the time. <laughs> no, no, she reads, she reads. She just, you know, you're busy. For practice, I have audio I mean, books too. No, for practice, I mean, like for spiritual practice. That's what yes. I'm talking about, where I don't read as many books That's because funny. of the idea that you know, I need to embody. Like, I love to read the, you know, like I love to read them. It's great, yeah. but it, but it becomes more of an entertainment value than an actual learning process for me. So that's why I always like to do like embodying exercises yeah. around it. So I don't know for when I read the books, it, it inspires me and gets my wheels turning about other practices and how things are applied and how things are done. Like it, it gives me the blueprint to where I can then go and do the practice on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, if it is a practice that I can practice because, you know, you might read a book and it may tell you how to summon, you know, Oshun or a demon or whatever, and you may not have any business doing so. <laughs> so it's not, yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> you know, 
some things are closed, some things are open, some things can be read about and talked about, other things can be practiced and shared. So, you know, be mindful and respectful when you are coming to a lot of these practices, especially the indigenous ones, because they, they predate us. They, they're the, the basis of all that we believe in this world. And it deserves the respect and reverence that, you know, that it, that it has because of the longevity, because of what it is made of, and because of just the sheer amount of people it has touched and helped throughout the, the generations. So, you know, well, on that note, we're happy all of you guys, you know, came back and watched with us and chatted with us and, you know, listened to all of our lovely books and ideas. Um, we put out a podcast episode every Thursday on YouTube and on all podcasting apps. I'm Athena Silver. I'm a professional psychic medium. Uh, if you want to have a tarot reading or a mediumship reading or a cleansing, reach out to me. My website is readingswithathenasilver.com. My, my Instagram is at athena.silver. My TikTok is Athena underscore silver. And my Facebook is readings with Athena silver. That was a lot. What about you, <laughs> Anya? <laughs> Mine is a little simpler. It's at Anya River, A-N-J-A-R-I-V-E-R on Facebook and Instagram. I also do tarot readings. If you'd like a tarot reading from me, just reach out on Facebook or Instagram. I'll be there. Awesome. Well, <laughs> we will see you guys next Thursday. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye. Bye.